Hey everybody, just thought I'd do a quick video on the market because you know everything's dropping and it's kind of terrible. And I, I know a lot of you are feeling very anxious about this, and I myself am feeling the pain. I'll show you the numbers in a bit, but uh, I just wanted to kind of uh, give you some assurance or let you know what's going on a little bit. I hope it helps uh, you sleep better at night. So I'm just going to jump into it. Um, looking at this, this is the this is the like uh, black star PIs that I'm sure a lot of you are copying, and as you can see, um, basically everybody is down, and it's kind of frightening. Um, yeah, just let me double check this video. And make sure it's right, okay, it's right. Okay, right. Okay, yeah. So this this is kind of frightening. Everybody is down quite a bit. In fact, double digits is almost not uncommon and I think once the market refreshes it's going to be double digits for a lot of people I myself am looking at my numbers right now uh, it only looks like minus 0 0.6 as of this moment um, but as you can see 0 0.6 but as you can see from here it's going to be down another two almost three percent when, when this kind of refreshes a lot to do with crypto but we'll get into that okay so looking at the screen now if we see, look at the markets um, Everything has come down, so there's not a real good safe place to hide. Uh, looking at this, if you bought like uh, bonds, you would be good. At, and this is the long end bonds. This is the US dollar. You would have buys quite a bit. Um, but if you look at just the index and stock indexes, you would have been crushed. And this is generally what happens. Um, there has been a little bit of reprise in the kind of um, commodities markets, and we are very exposed, which is why we don't have uh, double digit pain as a lot of people have uh this is different from Jordan. i'm just talking about month on month and of course cryptos have taken just an absolute beating and again this is a full-time job so it's been not fun at all i'm um, looking at this the this is the crypto portfolio uh this was at a high of 80 and it's down to, and this is weighted so this is not just one bitcoin or ethereum that's why you're seeing these numbers it's not just uh it's painful, you know, all coins have dropped a lot more and knowing our portfolio, we own a lot of alt, so that's a big reason for the pain. Okay, so I want to go over a few things on, on the stocks. Um, we have been saved a little bit by things like the China Petroleum uh, Energy Transfer has done well for us over the past few days and less pain. Uh, but, you know, you can see here uranium, which is down a little bit, it's be mainly because of Camco, which we actually sold a position on. So we're about break even for this position. Uh, I prefer uh, ETF because it's more diversified than just a single stock. So that's why we switched to this. Um, but yeah, it's feeling some pain. And uh, in fact, Alibaba and, and Tencent have actually done pretty okay. Um, Alibaba, if you know my portfolio, was actually down like 20%, but now it's backed up. So that also saved us a little bit. But the main pain is felt, of course, crypto, and I'm very, very long dot. Uh, good thing it's not everything I have. If not, this would be a lot worse. But it, it's it's interesting um, because I've seen a lot of these as see a lot of these as relative value plays. In fact, I did sell out a bunch of positions. Um, if you look at this, it's my history. Uh, Matic, I saw as a Matic, EQS, Discovery, uh, WBA. All these I kind of see as um, relative value positions, so I sold out of them. Um, yeah, and what you can see has happened here is that anything that follows the stock market, it just follows a little bit less beta, has taken a little bit of a hit, and I don't want to be long those anymore. Uh, in fact, from an absolute basis, you don't want to be long those. So, I think a question that a lot of people have is, did you see this coming? And if you didn't see this coming, why, why didn't you do something about it? And that, that's an interesting question. Um, I can see that this is not worked out. So that's an interesting question, right? Like if I see saw this coming. So if you go back to my to my this investor update, this twelve forty mark thereabouts, right? Uh, just listen, I'll just play it for you. It's not really there. Um, I know that you know we've come a long way off the bottom, but I'm in Singapore and we have one of the most compliant people in the world, and we are kind of semi in lockdown we have a lot of restrictions we're only allowed to dine out in groups of two 
and our vaccine rates are very high. Uh, they're like 80%. Uh, but still, our hospitals are filling up. So COVID is not going to go away. Uh, people are still going to suffer from it. Reopening is not going to be happening for a little bit longer than expected. But stock market is still all-time high. Does that make any sense? My answer is probably not. Um, it is what it is. Yeah, so I did say that it probably doesn't make any sense that all this is kind of happening, um, the stock market being so high. And, you know, if you look at things like the CNBC, which a lot of you I know follow, um, you can see that here, bond yields snapped higher, stocks fell. And over here, all it's talking about is really yields. Yields have come up and therefore, you know, stocks should come down, which I do agree with on a philosophical basis, because if you think about stocks, they're just a discounting mechanism. So 100% agree. But having said that, um, I want to show you a post. This is from my blog. It's just no longer online, so you can't find it. Um, this says here, see. Okay. So what I said here is basically cost of funding is likely to increase with interest rates. And what will happen is due to the high P ratios we're experiencing at that time um, on the other side of the equation, it's not likely that you're gonna have this kind of a it's actually not the part I was looking at. Hang on. There we go. With a rising interest rate environment at three times of 2017, which could last about blah blah blah. Um P ratios do not provide a premium risk return over these rates. So what I was saying is that interest rates are going up. And we should be concerned because the stock market is so overvalued. It's not likely that they're going to be able to match up. So they're going to take a fall. Um, but this, when I wrote this article, this was in 2017. This is a long time ago, right? And if I, if I took that view then, and this is what I would have missed out on, 113% bull market run on the S&P 500. So what I'm trying to say here is actually that there is no real logic in the stock market when it comes to things like this. Um, a lot of people want to find answers and I understand why uh, our brain wants to find answers and the media wants to provide us with answers so we keep tuning into them. Same with all YouTubers that tell us the end is coming and that's the best way to catch views. Best way to catch views is incite the fear so that you keep going back more and more and more. And this is called media bias. You guys, you guys can go and read up about it. Um, but as, as an investor or as someone managing a portfolio, we're just basically saying where's the best place to put our bets. Uh, one of the things that we said, uh, especially beginning of this year, is that we wanted to hold cash. And till today, we, we still have done that. And that's why our portfolio is a little bit more resilient than others. Um, still, again, taking a beating because of crypto, but it would have been worse if we weren't holding cash, right? So you can see from my portfolio here that um, we still have about 25% cash today. So where are we going to deploy this in this really volatile market? I think the answer is probably going to be um, uh, despite all of this, right, looking at the market today, uh, I don't know if people missed this out or wouldn't report it or wh what it was, but China's actually cut interest rates, uh, both on the medium term and the, and the long run. So this is a lot of people are saying to help the property sector, which I don't disagree with, but it also means if you think about it from a US perspective, it helped the tech stocks grow. So uh, since I'm long tech in China already, I think we are sufficiently allocated to that part. But I do like the fundamental plays within China. I think some of those could be really interesting. Um, I do want to catch a bit more cryptos now. <laughs> I do admit, I, I do like cryptos at these levels. Um, I sold out all my math because now layer 2 scaling doesn't make sense, especially when prices have come down. If gas rates have come down, all that has come down. Does layer 2 really make any more sense? Probably not. So I sold out all my math. Um, but the layer 1, like Ethereum, the main, main big boy in there is now looking really interesting at these levels. Uh, but we're not going to try and catch this. This is a falling knife. Um, as I've mentioned many times, I don't think cryptos have a real fundamental valuation. Everything that we have on cryptos is a relative value, a relative performance. So it's, it's good not to be too gung-ho and just, just take the risk and go for it. But I think I want to wait a bit and deploy slowly. Like I've done with uh, DOT, as you guys can see from DOT. I've, I've gone in multiple times, uh, mainly because I, I didn't know where the bottom was. And I've been wrong so far. Uh, look at that. When it's four times, one one percent each time. And if you look at that, it's only about four or five percent of my portfolio. And this is my biggest holding of it. But it's it's by far the biggest drag because four or five percent, but fifty percent down means that you've lost about two point two point 
2.4, 2.5%. So if um, minus dot, I would practically be break even right now, which is good. Um, and also another thing I wanted to point out is Russia. Russia has been something that people have been asking me about and I, I've kind of um, gotten into it. So Russia, if you look at this, which is more representative of my position because I, I bought in pretty early. I sold out because I panicked. I got a minute I panicked. Um, I saw the Crimea news. I saw the um, Ukraine stuff, and I was like, "Okay, this is bad. I need to get out." Um, but what I failed to remember is that all this has been going on for some time. So this is a mistake on my part. I'm I'm human. It kind of got to me, so I made a mistake. Um, but if you think about it, like this war thing has been going on for about seven years, and go to like blocks, years. Why Russia is invading Ukraine seven years ago, right? So uh, I love Vox. Uh, I love the stuff that they do. Um, but yeah, it's been going on for a while. And is it any closer? Or it's possible, you know. It's definitely possible, and it's why it's not a huge position in my portfolio even then. But having said that, if you look at the swings of my portfolio, Russia is very, very um, kind of uh, weighted towards oil. So now we're about twelve percent down on this. But if you look at China Petroleum, a 13% up. So that's a total of a 25% swing. If this position was not down and it was up the other way around, same reason, I would probably be in about the break-even range. Um, simply because this is actually a large position on my portfolio. I've sold out since because, I, again, I panicked, but I bought back in because I was like, okay, this is, I, I had some self-reflection and realized that that's not the right way to do it. So I, I got back in, uh, but not as large as a position as I had previously. So all these kind of play into the parts. And again, this is not excuse. This is just the way the market is. Uh, is there any value to be found in this market when everything's coming down? It's, it's a very, very hard question. And as you can see from all other popular investors, I think a lot of people are struggling, myself included. And we're all going to struggle for a little bit. I think it'd be interesting because um, I think I'm in a slightly better position than most people because of how much cash we have on hand. Uh, but, you know, it'll be interesting to see how, how we go from here. I, I'm kind of waiting towards going towards fundamental stocks in China since they are doing their quantitative easing there. Um, there are a few plays that I like, like uh, China Mobile, something I've been looking at, China Railway is something I've been looking at. And I'm not long China, I just think given the economics of where we are right now, China does, or anywhere outside the US does have a better fundamental basis. Uh, Europe can be a bit overvalued. I gotta admit, I've, I've looked at Europe, I looked at so many stocks. I've even looked at Brazil, and th there's some that I really liked at the time, but uh, given the valuations, I wasn't too fascinated. So, right now, given everything in the economic backdrop, I think China uh, seems to be in the best position right now. And it's really taken such a big beating because of, you know, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure you guys, this is fascinating. Right? It's already like Alibaba has taken such a big beating. It's more than half, right? Um, and this was way back in, in September of last year. So this has already taken a real beating. And we bought it close to the bottoms and it, it went even lower. So th this just goes to show like how much this market kind of uh, doesn't like China from an emotional point of view. But from a fundamental point of view, from valuation metrics, it does make a lot of sense. Uh, having said that, I never allow more than myself to lose more than 10% in one thesis. That's why I'm a position sizing is um, how it is. And I think that's one of the reasons why I would I aim to be the best performing PI in the next uh, 20 years, right? Not just the next five years. Uh, I think the discipline will really help me. And I I'm hoping that the cash that we have on hand can be deployed kind of well into the market when everything's suppressed and try and get, get as much returns as we can. This is not to say it's not going to be a choppy year. I think, <laughs> if anything, this has proven that I think a lot of people are going to start chasing returns in places that they don't understand. So for eToro, it's going to be hard. I think it's going to be very, very hard. But it'll be very interesting because now we can separate the real like good traders from uh, people who are just kind of uh, running back and forth between different trends. And it'll be interesting. Right? It'll be interesting. So um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm feeling a lot of pain. Oh, I, I mentioned I wanted to show this. If you look at my portfolio, like my personal base portfolio, um, yeah, <laughs> this is so painful to look at. Look at that, 7,003. Um, my personal portfolio is at maximum 8.2. So 
by eight two, yeah, that about eight two, and now I'm at seven three. So I've lost about ten thousand dollars on this portfolio personally. Right? Um, this is based on drawdown, so it's not a very good measure, but um, it's a measure nonetheless. It's very very painful to look at that and say, oh, I'm twelve thousand dollars down, and that is like a what was that a twenty percent drawdown? Um, it's very painful. It's very very painful. Not twenty percent. That was like a hmm, see. 15% drawdown. So my, my max is I never try and drop more than 30, but we'll see how we go. Uh, so it, anyway, it's been very painful and it, it's, I know some of you are feeling very anxious about this, but I have to say this is part of the market. If you look at Warren Buffett, um, that is actually a, a year where he lost like 50% of his portfolio. And he, he, he did say himself, like, if you're not winning those 50%, perhaps you shouldn't be in the stock market. And this is also why I tell like people who copy me, it's always best to make sure you have some savings so you don't worry about stock market too much. It's unpredictable. It goes up, it goes down, and and today we are feeling some pain. So we'll see how we go. I'm hoping to deploy the cash well. Uh, again, this is just to kind of put you at ease and say that you know, I know all this is happening. Uh, I'm not shying away from it. Uh, I'm not here to disappear and just take my monthly PI, PI payments. That's exactly the kind of thing I'm not trying to do. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really trying to help people as much as I can manage their portfolio. And this is part of that game, unfortunately. So, so let's just keep going and see how we go. If any questions, just feel free to drop it. I will do my best to reply. Have a good week, everyone. Hope you do better.